in the Cheney Cowboys and, and a team that has a very big upside coming into 2021. What do we have with Cheney? Uh, well, right off the bat, we'll look at some guys that they lost to. Offensive players lost Terrence Harris, a tight end, Bryant Douglas, a wide receiver, Maitwan Cottle, offensive lineman, Anthony Colton, a wide receiver slash cornerback, and our slot wide receiver, Raheem Trailer. Uh, they also lost Delshawn Petrosky, a defensive back who kind of started coming into his own at quarterback a little bit last year, too, and started having success later down the road. They lose that. But some guys that they're going to be bringing back, and it's a lot of defensive guys. And let me tell you, it's part of this defensive line that Cheney started building last year, and it started becoming real dominant. You're looking at J.R. Tellington, a senior defensive lineman, Clive Wilson, a senior defensive lineman, Jawan Freeman, junior defensive tackle, and then Jason Hewlett is a defensive back, junior defensive back. But you're looking at that J.R. Tellington, Clive Wilson, Jawan Freeman, those three up front are going to create nightmares for run run offenses. And it created nightmares too. We saw last year, I saw it firsthand, Fitch's run game get almost completely silenced by Cheney at times because of just the size up front of the Cowboys. Their ability to penetrate the line was was a really good aspect of their defense. They felt like they squeaked through little tiny holes and were always breaking up plays in the backfield last year. Yeah, and I mean, the the thing with their offense and the what I'm curious to see with, with Cheney's offense is what they're kind of utilizing. Uh, there's some questions on what the quarterback situation is going to be, but I'll tell you the one offensive lineman that they have in uh, Rolando Bruno, 325 pounds, six foot four junior, man. He's a, he's a big guy and he's huge protection up front for either running backs or quarterbacks. So he's the type of guy you want on that offensive line. And he's going to give you all the protection you need and all the protection that coach Emil needs to try to, uh, figure out a game plan. Cause like we said, a lot of those guys on the defensive line, they could play both sides. So Cheney has a lot of size on both sides of the line. So going to be uh, curious to see what uh coach of milk can draw up in the running game and see if he could throw in some uh, good passing schemes as well. Ty, look who we have coming sashaying into the, to the studio. Uh, oh, the, the legendary Scotty Mincher. <laughs> Scotty. How are we doing, buddy? I'm, I'm great. I'm, I'm ready to go today. And, uh, Today we have Ty with us as you well. You do. Well, uh, We're the three amigos. The man. three amigos. Ty, uh, you got to put on the headphones so you can hear our buddy Ty. Uh, but, man, what an opportunity to talk to a little bit of Scotty today. Yeah, absolutely. We always laugh uh, at Scotty. He always makes us laugh every time he comes on the show at, at Power Hour. So getting a chance to see Scotty on Running Point, too. What a treat here on a, on a Wednesday edition. All right, so back to, to Cheney's defense and their schedule. What, what kind of things does their schedule really premiere? Well, we're going to be look, looking at Cheney's schedule. We already know opening it up with uh, with Fitch. They're going right back to the uh, the good old days of, of opening it up against Fitch, and that's going to be a tough game right out the gate, and it's going to test the Cowboys, who I think are going to take a huge step um, this year, and it's going to be a huge test right out the gate for them. Following Fitch, you go right to Boardman. You're at home versus Boardman. You're home versus Cardinal Mooney. You go at St. Charles, at Campfield, at Ursland, Ooh. at Painesville Harvey, home versus Howland, home versus Harding, home versus East. And if that doesn't tell you how much of a gauntlet Cheney's trying to put themselves through. Uh, it's a tough schedule, but the Cowboys think that they're ready for it. And you saw they scheduled up two in basketball. They're doing the same thing in football. They Their motto, man, if they're going to breed athletes, they got to put them up against some of the best in the state. And they're not shying away from competition. Scotty, we know you love toughness and you love tough schedules, no matter what sport or, or level of, of the game we're talking about, man. What advantages do you think tough scheduling kind of brings to a team? Yeah, I, uh, I'm, I'm all about it for sure. When uh, P.J. Fedko, the, the former head coach out in Mooney, when he was still the coach there, and uh, I, I would get interviews w with him before I, uh, I jumped aboard this great winning machine at there you YSN. Go. Uh, he, he would always talk about how they love the high expectations and they didn't want run away for, from it. Uh, to me, it just it, it hardens you and, you know, make, makes you stronger. 
uh, like the old saying goes, what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. And not to get too far off the high school topic, but to kind of tie it in to the high school level, uh, e even in college, being an Ohio State fan, um, if you look at uh, the recent failures in the college football playoff and then coming up short, not winning a national title. Sometimes I think if they scheduled just powerhouses out of conference, more of them, and it goes for a lot of schools, if they scheduled more of them, they'd be even better prepared for the playoffs uh, than, say, playing like an Akron and beating them like 70 to 7. So, uh, yeah, I think it, you, you, it's only an advantage, I think, playing a tough schedule. There, there's no disadvantage to it other than, you know, it, it could possibly keep you out, out of the playoffs. But I think that's something that, could be used as a – it could be used as a bright spot or a positive um, when you're talking about losing to opponents that are that are juggernauts in, in top of the line. I, I think people could look at it and say, yeah, they lost these games, but, you know, they're, they still shown they can hang with the big dogs. I mean, look at Ursuline. Oh. In the past, uh, I remember them going to the playoffs with a 500 or a below 500 record. So I think they're the prime example. Scotty said, what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. Well, hopefully none of these teams get close to death. But, uh, Ty, when you look at the uh, the schedule for Cheney, what's one game that you kind of circle and say this game's going to be really important to – their success, or if they drop it, maybe some of their struggles. Well, outside of that Fitch game, the one game that I'm really uh, kind of looking at that I think is going to be uh, going to be big out of the gates is going to be that Cardinal Mooney game, September third, because you're going August twentieth at Fitch, August twenty seventh versus Boardman. Those are two tough games, and regardless of where you come out of that, you prefer to come out two and zero, but realistically, you might be more around the one and one uh, aspect with, with Boardman and Fitch both being looking to be tough opponents this year. Uh, that's going to be a big game. In-conference game two against Mooney, who looks to take another step up. Mooney and Cheney both hovered around the same uh, place last year. Cheney beating Mooney last year, too. So you have that rivalry, and we know Coach Emil had ties to Mooney at 1.2, graduate of Mooney, so there's that little rivalry there as, as well. So that, I think, will be a good game, too. A week three game that I think is really going to uh, either boost the Cowboys for the rest of the season, or it might be a hindrance for them that they have to battle through uh, going through the rest of the way. Cheney, a team that uh, last year was young but athletic and and made a couple of young mistakes, of course. But with uh, with youth comes the next year comes growth. Scotty, we all know that. Uh, what kind of things can you say about uh, experience and, and what it can bring to a team no matter what uh, – stage you're on. I mean, every every uh, athlete gets better the more games they have under their belt. Yeah, and, and I think, um, Anthony, that, that that really goes the, the more experience, the better in so many and really just about any aspect of life. Um, I've always uh, kind of thought about it this way, like People talk about playoff experience, and I used to think when I was younger, eh, is it really that important or is it overrated? But uh, living with a disability, uh, again, this, this might seem like an odd time here, but living with a disability, I've had to have a lot of surgeries. I'm sure you have too, Anthony. And it's it's one of those things where, uh, every time I would go see a doctor and somebody that was going to perform a surgery, I wanted the older guy and the guy <laughs> yeah. that was more had the more ex experience. Um, so, 
Yeah, I, I think all it does is is help you out. Um, it, it's one of those things where you keep knocking at the door. Eventually, you're going to kick it down. And I, I think that could be the case for Springfield and, and Bo Brungard this year. Scotty's looking at that that uh, that uh, surgeon intern saying, no, no, no. I said no, thanks. <laughs> no, thank I'll you. I'll go with my daughter who has 25 years of experience. So I do, I do think that's a huge difference. Uh, e- even looking at um, my favorite team in Cleveland right now, and it changes, but the Browns, um, if they didn't have that playoff experience last year and get to experience a playoff win and then a close game against a juggernaut Chiefs uh, team, one of the top teams in the NFL, uh, I don't think people would be considering the Browns as a legit, you know, Super Bowl contender. But because of last year and what they were able to do, I think most people do consider the Browns a contender. And uh, you, you get that experience and then uh, you, you still have the nerves and the excitement and the butterflies, but I think the second and third time around, when you have that great experience, you use the nerves in a good way. And it's the good nerves that help you when you can say, okay, we've been here before. Let's, let's learn from, from this and continue to grow and, and get better and, improve on what we did the previous year man scotty i love having you on the show you're always bringing me joy because the 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 uh, the ability to drop one-liners like you just did just a minute ago and i had to get off camera real quick so i could just laugh hysterically uh man i love it you you bring a lot to this show we're gonna take a quick time out scotty will stay with us we're gonna continue our coverage of the steel valley conference as we Go into previews of Mooney and East next on Running Point.